Okay. So everybody needs to accept that, so it's okay. So, so I thought we could start quickly with some introductions, and then you guys can show me your rocket, uh, okay. which is the. My name is Tarek, and I'm the which is mailing with you, which is communicating with you. Yes. Our team is Lagari Trust Rocket Team, which is located in Istanbul, Turkey, and Istanbul Technical University. In yeah. this workshop, we work with six different technology teams, and this is our space, which we work and togetherly make our rockets. So in our in Turkey, we participate the national rocket competitions, which named yes, Technofest. Techno every yeah. year we attend, every summer actually, we attend the Technofest competition. And the last years we actually, another league competed in IREC also. also. 20, yeah. 20. Uh, the team is combining with all the departments of our university, which I'm from control and automation engineering department, which is located in electric and electronic faculty. Other yeah. team members are Burak. I, I am metallurgical and materials engineering student. So I basically handle with the composite production, production methods, also a material selection, uh, yeah. because we get this really critical process for the rocket production composite production and yeah. also we have other departments also aerospace engineering mechanical engineering uh, electro electrical communication engineering for avionics system yeah. so it looks like you have as many women on your team as men on yes. your team yeah. it's like equal this year yeah. it is very good <laughs> okay ladies i'm very happy you are working on the rocket, and I look forward to meeting you in the United States if you can come. Okay. Um, so, so just very quickly, I'm Brett Bachman. Um, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is about four hours by car north of Spaceport. So I'm going to be driving from my house to... <laughs> To the competition. We have a long plane trip to <laughs> came America. Yeah, so I'm a, a level three flyer. I I uh, I'm the president of the Albuquerque Rocket Society. It's a TRA prefect in Albuquerque, a little south of Santa Fe. Um, I'm the prefect there, and and um, you know we. Uh, we have two launch sites. One of them is in Albuquerque. We have a waiver of 15,000 feet, you know, basically 5,000 meters. And then we have another site. We fly a lot just north of White Sands. So it's it's about 30 miles north of the, of the spaceport. And we have a waiver to 65,000 feet there. So I have a lot of experience flying in the exact place you're about to fly your rocket so i'm happy to share any experience i have if you have questions thank you. okay thank you. all right so that's me eric uh you're helping these guys i'm sure yes um yeah so uh just as an introduction mainly to brett um since i've already sent a bit of my prior experience to you guys already, uh, but just to re-clarify. So uh, my name is Eric Eastam. Uh, I recently graduated uh, university about two years ago. Um, you may have heard of the university, it's Utah State. Uh, they are a current uh, team in the competition, uh, though they only scored 34th in the 10K category. I actually participated in the spaceport competition as a student in 2018. Um, I'll just say that the level of quality of uh, what's accepted and what uh, performs at spaceport has vastly improved 
um, in the four or five years since I competed. I believe we had two rockets explode on the pad in 2018. Um, we didn't see them because you can't see the flight line from the student area, uh, but we could definitely hear them. Uh, I was the, so let's see, I was in the uh, rocket club for five years. Uh, the last year I was the club president. Um, I, let's see. So I'm a level three certified flyer. Um, I completed that back in 2019, um, here in Utah. Uh, and I will also be driving, uh, and it may take me as long to drive as it will be for you to fly, uh, <laughs> since it'll take me about two days. Okay, great. So we only have one hour. So I'm going to turn the agenda to you guys. Okay. Please show me your rocket. Start, you know, at the top. Show me all the parts. Uh, okay. Show me a few details. Um, uh, and then if we can't finish in one hour, we can continue. But let, let's see what you got. Okay, we can start with the nose cone, I think. Is it okay with starting with the nose cone? Yeah. Okay. Is it one cone now? Yeah, this is uh, a geometrical shape is a uh, one car month nose cone type. Uh, we, pro we have produced this uh, nose cone with vacuum bag bagging method. We also have two molds. Uh, they are female molds. Uh, they are in the molds. Yeah, sure. Uh, we use we, we use uh, male mold to produce female molds. After that, we uh, produce our nose cone uh, with car uh, carbon fiber uh, to Time, two times two trivial uh, fabrics. Uh, they, are, they are a 650 gram per uh, meter square density. Uh, we use lamination theory for the uh, production because uh, we uh, want to produce a quasi-isotropic uh, material. Uh, we, for instance, zero degree angle after that uh, 45 degree angle. Uh, we have uh, three, three uh, layers of uh, carbon fiber. Uh, after uh, vacuum uh, bagging, uh, we also apply a uh, debulking process to uh, have, have in low porosity in the microstructure because porosities are very critical. Uh, they low, uh, they make lower strength of the nose cone. Uh, they decrease the strength of the nose cone. Uh, after that, we uh, mm, a separated uh, parts, but we need to uh, connect them together. Uh, after vacuum bagging, we also uh, apply support. Uh, we, have, we also apply layers of the support points to uh, between points, separation points to uh, increase the strength. We, because we don't want any shear strength. Can you show me the shoulder on the bottom of the nose cone so I could see more clearly? Yeah. Okay, nice. So so that slides inside the airframe. And how how is the nose cone attached? Is it shear pins? Is this is this coming out or do you screw it? What um we uh, we are planning to use uh, shear pins, uh, M M3 shear pins, metric metric three shear pins, but we don't have any any holes right now. Uh, we uh, I uh, calculated the enough pressure for ejection. We use hot, hot gas ejection uh, method. Uh, we need to produce enough uh, pressure to create piston effect in the uh, upper body tube. Uh, but we don't have any all sorts of uh, shear pins. The, uh, we are planning to use nylon six uh, shear pins. And, and how many did you plan? Sure, pens. Uh, three, three or four, three. Okay, so typically, uh, for rockets I've flown, uh, kind of like yours, uh, I, I can't remember M three equivalent, but I'm sh I'm typically flying with four, four forty U S thread shear pins, and and that that could be, you know, I. I I'm confident that could work for you well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. M3s are a little larger than a 256. Yeah, so typically I would say four 440s. 
you know, something like that. We also calculated the uh, air pressure at the uh, maximum altitude to, because yep. uh, the inside pressure and air pressure is the difference. Uh, we use piston effect uh, during. Yep. Uh, so there's a little play I noticed when you when you the the nose cone wiggles a little mm. bit. Do you intend to put like some tape or any material to to make it a little tighter in the airframe? What is your plan? I think we can we use uh, aluminum bands or some structural elements to avoid the wiggling. Now we yeah. try to show you the manufacturing. Yeah, that's because we didn't actually complete it. It's like a raw material okay. for for to show you. We yeah. we probably make it perfectly fit and doesn't fit. Because we have a shoulder point, shoulder uh, region is not perfect right now. We, okay, uh, so you, you're still to... working on the finish of the shoulder. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I we see. also apply repairment process. Okay, so it's going to be more like the one you just put in the airframe, maybe. Something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have two two nose cones because yeah. one of them is uh, for testing and another one is for the rocket. Nice. Okay, so so there's a a parachute in the compartment below the nose cone. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and. And is there some kind of a vent hole in that compartment? Um, have you decided how you're going to handle that? Can you repeat again? Yes. So, so typically a compartment like you have that that's kind of big with with the parachute in it, uh, when the rocket is ascending, the air pressure increases. So yes. typically, you might drill a small hole. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, or uh, a few we holes. Will, we we will call have them vent holes. Two of them. Yeah. One of them in upper body, one of them in ionic blocks, and one of them at the lower body. It's total three. Total three, three of pressure holes. So the, they will be in that fiberglass section that, yes. that I see there. One how of many them in fiberglass. Big, how, roughly how many and how, how large would those holes be? Uh, metric, four, right? metric four, metric four, and we will have three of them. One of them in the upper uh, body tube, one of them in the avionics uh, region, okay. one of them in in the uh, lower body tube. Okay, so so the parachute you showed me is that the main parachute or is that the drogue parachute? Oh, drug parachute. It's, it's, it's a drug drug parachute. parachute, a small parachute. <laughs> It, it, it holds. It, it's the, the smaller drogue? Yes, yes. Small, yeah. Smaller one. And, and how big is it, roughly? How big? In, in diameter. Like a uh, half meter in diameter? That we build. Eight, 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 eight centimeters. Uh, it's diameter. Okay, great. And do you have a uh, some kind of a a, a D-ring or something at the bottom of it to connect? How will the recovery harness connect to your parachute? Can you just show me the end of the parachute? Oh, sure. It will connect with uh, Cerebral. Uh, we don't have any right now. Cerebral. And we will uh, connect it with Coriginus. Okay. Then like we will that. connect it with the no stone. Uh, the yes. This is and we ordered uh, some steel materials for the strong connection, but it's now we don't have one of them. We will use rod steel. Okay, so at the base of the nose cone, there will be a plate with an yes, eye, bolt. eye bolt. Yeah, we have we have bulkhead after, and and eye bolt is connected to bulkhead. That part will be on next dial. And short port is connected. Okay, so then you'll have the parachute directly connected to the yes. eye, and then the shock cord will continue down into the yes. uh, the, the the airframe tube. Okay, and and do you have some kind of a blanket you're going to wrap around the parachute? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protective materials for uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. protect perishable. Five, five prof materials. Uh, we have five prof materials. We will use them. Uh, the, uh, the so it's it's some kind of material that can't burn. It's uh yeah. yes. It's, it's, it's for protection. Okay, so show me the other part of this tube. What's on the other end? This is our upper body tube, which is made in fiberglass. Fiberglass, yes. The upper. Uh, this side is for the no connection. Okay. And we we came here. There is a avionics block. Okay, so so you have uh, the electronics bay kind of slides upward, and then you screw it in. Is is that yes. how? Yes. yes. This is the bulkhead here and here. This is yeah. connected in all with. The so all the electronics yeah. are yeah. in this section here. We use the upper body to uh, as fiberglass because uh, avionics is, uh, it doesn't have any problem with fiberglass. Uh, we know fiberglass is not as strong as carbon fiber epoxy, but uh, we need to use this material. Yeah. And we also apply again lamination theory. We uh, this is different uh, from the carbon fiber uh, of lower body tube and nose one. We use uh, 800 uh, gram per meter square uh, density. Last given. Can okay. we introduce the avionics systems right now? Or okay. So um so the 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 top uh, the, the forward end of the A V bay has some way to connect the shock cord, correct? So do you have an eye bolt? What 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 is the connection point between the shock cord and the top of the AV bay? No, this is a different bulkhead for the avionics. shock cord. We also have two different bulkheads uh, to protect the uh, avionics region because the avionic base can move. We actually move in the body and connect with the tube. Okay, so you have the a shock cord bulkhead is different. For yeah, the, so you have a bulkhead that that screws in. Yes. Above this one. Yes. Do you have it? Can you show it to me? Bulkhead. We have this is pay, uh, this is pay of Unix. Okay, so I see it's already yeah. inside is, there. Yes, yeah. yeah. This yeah. one and this one. You we, can see the scroll scroll. We, okay. we connect it for to show you as yeah. you wish we can on screws. Okay, so so you have an eye bolt. And, and it's aluminum, or what's the material of this? It's, it's aluminum, uh, three three uh, thousand sixty one, uh, okay. tempered six. And and does it have, uh, like charge cups with black powder in it? Yes. Şeyler. Uh, this, this is the. Uh, Ejection payload aldı. Uh, recovery disk. This is recovery disk. You can see this. This one. This recovery disk. Yes. Okay. So we they have, have payload and this recovery disk. Okay. And and there are charge cups on the top of these plates somehow? How, yes. How, yes. How, yes. Yes. They are similar. Cups yok mu? Teknoloji sıkıntı var. Benziyor zaten. Uh, wait a second. We don't have right now, but we will uh, show you the uh, parts. Yeah, we made okay. the part. We use the PLA material for the uh, design. Uh, okay. We uh, put the black powder in, in this uh, section. Then we scrub it. Nice. And and approximately how many grams of black powder do you think you uh, will? Two, uh, two and uh, two. 0.5 arounds. Our recovery system show. Okay, I see. All right. So you have two pass through. This goes to uh, avionics stuff. Yeah. And then you have a plug on the back that connects to the AV bay. 
Do you, do you have two charge cups or just one? Two, 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 two of them. Charge. One of them for the uh, current recovery. Okay. Can, can I see the charge cup again? I just want to. I want to okay. see the top of it real quick. This is small. We have also another rocket. This uh, this bulkhead is has a uh, one hundred twenty diameter. It's small. We have one hundred forty uh, centimeters diameter. This is small. We have another rocket here. We use it for the recovery test because this is not completed. We use the small rockets rocket for the recovery. So so you put in the black powder, and then. Do you do you put any material in or tape or something to cover it? What yeah, we use uh, ta tape, use uh, napkin and tape. Okay. To wrap, wrap, wrap it. To wrap. Okay, nice. All right, I understand. So, can you show me the AV bay and the electronics? Yeah. Here, with the PLA material. Uh, there is so. I'm that winning. Are you sleeping? Yeah, I, I saw you in the back. Good. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> so this is Avionics Bay, and we have communication card and the recovery card. This one okay. put here, and uh, the recovery card we came here. Okay. Uh, in the communication card, uh, we have two sensors and a communication module and the GPS. And a TV 401. Okay, so uh, so uh, can you show me where the batteries are located? How, how do you uh, mount the batteries? Other other side of the other side of the avionic bay. Yes, other side of the avionic bay. Okay, on the other side you have. You have some kind no, of a right. box. How are the batteries mounted? Uh, our battery is a uh, Lion battery, and uh, two of two of them are three point seven volts, and we we wrapped with electrical band and we connected them with uh, yeah, stereo man. stereo. Okay. Uh, two of two of them with BMS uh, actually. We, so. So is it um, like, do you have zip ties to hold it down or do you have it like in a little box? How, how do you prevent it from moving? Uh, no, no. Uh, this is the prototype, another prototype of the avionic bay. Like that, we extend our batteries after that using a two hole in here and we said plastic. What's that? Yeah, we we call it zip tie. Where where you yeah, zip tie. tie. Sorry. We use a uh, zip tie to the point, but can't find right now. Sorry. Yeah. So so you have like two zip ties each. Yes. Yeah. And it it doesn't move. We sure yeah. that it doesn't move or doesn't you know uh, the protection we made to protect them. Okay. In, nice. In our country, we use lipo batteries for the competition but this year in iraq it's forbidden no, no, yeah no, no, no. because of that we switch the lion batteries it's suitable for us and it's not too dangerous like life yeah. so that we use it okay have you flight tested the electronics that you just showed me yes it has to be yeah actually we we tested last summer in I told you the national competition and we re recovered our rocket system 
This year we plan to make a test flight in the May, but unfortunately the competition said us there is no motor they rock, don't have rocket motor supply and because yeah. of the problem in our motor supply there will be no flight test we actually planned it's told to it's it will be made in, like in may may 15 or something but then they told us there is no motor for flight the rockets yeah. And we we can't make. So you flew this hardware last yes. year, one yes. year ago. Yes. Have you made Have you made changes to the firmware, the software, uh, or is change, it the same? Um, small uh, changes like uh, dimensions are smaller, and some places are different actually, but. Same. Logic is same. Yes. Okay, so the the essential things are the same. Yes. Yeah. And we changed the uh, parts of the communication band. Uh, we changed the uh, from we changed it uh, to nine hundred and fifteen megahertz. Okay. From the uh, yeah we. Drama. This this last year our team mentor has a ham license, radio license, yeah. and in America we can use 40, yeah. 433 megahertz last yeah. year. But this year there is nobody had a radio radio license because of that we use the ISM band for the communication, which yeah. is allowed in America. There is no problem about the communication. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, and then you have a COTS altimeter too? COTS altimeter. BMA. You have like a Telemega or yes. a yes. Raven. Yeah. Uh, Antacor. 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 Three, I think. So it's a Raven three. Have, have you have you programmed the Raven three? Do you know how you want to configure it? Yes, yes. Uh, it it has very uh, simple interface. Uh, we just uh, arranged some parameters uh, for like uh, how many seconds it will. Uh, the delay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the... yeah, it's the ejection time. We your, set the ejection time for the Microsoft recovery point. system, and not the second recovery part. Yeah, and and have you set it for barometric or accelerometer based? Okay, good. And and what what altitude do you have it set to open the main parachute? So it's more than a thousand feet. Okay, good. Yes. All right. And and so so how do you how do you attach the cover for this AV bay that you showed me? There's, there's, there's a section of the rocket. Do you have some fiberglass you screw in? How, how does that get covered? Okay, so you have a compartment. You have four screws. Yes. There will be three holes for the opening our, our unit bay systems, like chase switch or button switch. We probably use chase switch more safe. We will open the three holes in here and connect the chase switch. Yeah, and, and do you have some vents uh, that will allow the barometric sensors to to get the correct yeah. pressure? Yeah. 
basınç ha, nedeni söyleyeyim. Kapak dedi mi? Kapak tarafı. Yani. It's the opposite side of the body. <gülüyor> We will open the... So you're going to control them in the other side. Okay. For the barometer tensor. Okay. So it uh, looks good. So could you show me the remaining parts of the rocket okay. all the way to the bottom? We can, I think we can uh, show you the coupler and the lower body suit. Yes, these are coupler. Uh, this is carbon fiber. This is our coupler. Uh, we will uh, assemble the cou cou uh, coupler uh, on the lower body suit. Uh, so with... the, the fiberglass section I just saw slides yes. directly over this? The, yeah, the... we can uh, show uh, yes. Attachment to the... Oh. But this is very high. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I, I, I understand. Not, okay. not the the so ceiling is too low. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of a nice fit. It's okay. Uh, yeah, good. Looks good. Yeah, it's pretty tight. And and you'll have like three or four shear pins in. There's no one short. Yeah. We uh, produce the uh, coupler with uh, carbon fiber again, because carbon fiber, you know, it's uh, more st stiffer than a uh, glass fiber. Uh, we coupler because coupler uh, need is need to be uh, stiffer than uh, end of any other parts. It's very critical. Uh, and lower body tube also is carbon fiber epoxy. We also use lamination theory and we also uh, calculate the fiber and matrix uh, volume ratio ratio in every step. So uh, we, a new camera. We, can, you can you see the new camera? I can. Yeah, the new camera looks great. Yeah, we can show you like this. Yeah, so yeah, the turn around. is attached with the screws. Is that correct? Yes. Not a couple. Coupler. Coupler. We will uh, screw. There. The audio stopped for me. Can you hear them, Eric? Nope. Okay, guys. Um, can you hear us in Turkey? Because the audio on your side has stopped. Um, also, the non-phone-based okay. camera froze. Okay. Oh, there we go. It's back now. Hello? Hello. Yeah, okay. we lost we you are, for just a minute. Our friend has a phone calling because we don't have any internet connection here. He uses a hotspot uh, phone and his step, uh, mobile phone is called. Uh, called someone has called him. Uh, sorry oh. for that. Uh, we will uh, use screws uh, to assemble for assembly process of coupler uh, on for uh, on the lower body tube. We also think other, about uh, using adhesives uh, like epoxy. Yeah. We because of this reason we use uh, peel fly uh, on the coupler because peel fly increases the surface area uh, on the surface. Uh, we would like to have increased surface area for the uh, successful uh, adhesive uh, process. Okay, so can we are you... using epoxy and M4 for the screw. connection. Yes. Okay. Can you show me the fins and the yes. okay. fins and 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 that? Okay, we use uh, again uh, six thousand six one and uh, tamper six uh, aluminum uh, alloy uh, because alum uh, this aluminum alloy type is H hardened and prestation hardened uh, aluminum alloy. Uh, it is heat treated. Uh, and has excellent strength and ductility properties. Uh, because of this reason, we don't have, because uh, the fins are very critical in this uh, flight, uh, we don't uh, want any failure from the fins. Because of that reason, we use a three millimeter thickness of fins and uh, it's uh, important material, material is selected. And so, do you plan to put any fillets in with epoxy, or yeah. is that you going to fly? And we are planning to uh, fill here with epoxy 
and uh, we are produce is pellets for aerodynamic shape. Yeah. So how rigid is this structure uh, now without the pellets? And uh, we can we you saw... grab two fins and yeah. kind of pull them. To, you know what happens? Did they flex at all? Can you repeat again? So if if you take two of the fins and 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 like squeeze them together, do they bend? Or no, is no, it, no. Have, you also have another uh, something yeah, you can't see. You can't see the, in the other it's camera. It's, it's the same. It's different model. We have the same structure in its uh, lower body tube. It's, it's like that. We also uh, 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 sent the engine in engine uh, through this hole. You can see. Sweet. Okay, so it's pretty rigid already, but then you're going to yes. add some epoxy. And, to... and we calculate uh, film plotter for uh, calculation, and we are uh, observe no no problem uh, film plotter, and we are under the film plotter uh, boundary speed. Uh, there is uh, no problem for plotter. Okay, so can you show me where the rail buttons will mount? We are we are planning a right button uh upper front upper front this year uh and Upper avionic disc. And, and the upper avionic, avionic disc. disc. Can you see on camera? The other camera, camera. So, so the bottom rail button will be located where? Can you show me exactly where the one okay. at the okay. aft end is located? This one. Okay, so why not put it at a, at the very bottom, like three inches, like um, you know, five centimeters above the motor? Yeah, uh, yeah. He has habits, habits to <laughs> design this type of uh, structure. Our designer says that. But if you have a suggestion. We, we can. Uh, we don't have right now any yes, holes. Right. We can uh, change its we, place. We can move the. We can move the its, uh, place. We don't have well, any. Uh, you know, the higher up you mount the button, the less length you have for the rail, and the slower it it is leaving the rail. So sometimes. Uh, you know, it'll weathercock more. So my philosophy is always to move the rail buttons as far back as possible. So I have the maximum amount of rail to guide the rocket so that it can accelerate to the highest possible velocity. Okay. We understand. Thank yeah. you for the recommendation. Yeah. So, so typically... Um, I'm just going to talk general uh, for a six inch rocket that's as big as yours. I might have one rail button um, like four centimeters from the bottom, you know, at a, at a strong place. Um, and then I might go up like uh, a meter and a half and and have the second one. Yeah. Does, does that make sense to you? In terms of yeah. the total space between the two, first one is like the bottom, and the other is here. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you might consider uh, something like that. Um, okay. Eric, you obviously need to be comfortable with this, but uh, I normally wouldn't mount them up higher um, because you know if you can. If you can get your rail exit velocity up higher, you're going to fly straighter. Yeah, realistically, uh, your off the rail velocity is when the first rail button leaves the rail, because at that point the rocket can rotate freely. Um, so at most, even though the rails are 
about 17 feet long, um, you more realistically have about 12 to 14 feet, depending on where your top rail button is, uh, oh. to accelerate to upwards of 70 or 80 feet per second. Yeah, and if you can get to 115 feet a second, um, you're going to be straighter and you can fly in heavier winds. Uh, and, and so that would be quite impressive. I only know of two teams uh, that actually have off the rail velocities above 100 feet per second. Yeah. It's well, very I'm, hard to do. Yeah, I'm just saying that every inch. <laughs> yes. I understand. Okay, so how will you mount the rail buttons physically? Do you have some reinforcement behind the carbon fiber? How, how will you yeah. attach the rail buttons? We will mount bulkheads. We will the rail buttons to bulkheads. Okay, so you're going to have the bulkhead with the rail button uh, screwed into it, yes. basically? Yes. All right. Um, and, and you have probably a pretty big screw, right? So it can support the weight of the rocket. Yes. Okay. So can you show me what uh, it looks like inside this booster and at the bottom, how you retain the motor? Show, show me those details. You can see in the other telephone camera. If yeah. Okay. It's like that. The motor will enter in here with no no problem because of the the diameter of the disc is okay for the motor. And the is there a, a, a thrust plate or, or something where the motor thrust uh, presses? Yes, we have an engine block uh, with uh, 20 millimeter thickness because we not normally use a 10 millimeter thickness in our bulkheads, but engine block uh, need to uh, is need to be more stiff, stiffer. Uh, because of this reason, we use 20 millimeter thickness and it's aluminum, again, aluminum uh, 6013. Uh, series and uh, it's screwed we, it's screwed in yes we one. use with yeah. words uh, uh, three, 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 three per uh, 16 uh, uh, inch i think yes it's for is here it's uh, diameter Tony. yeah i see and then you have uh like an eye bolt or a u bolt on, on this for the recovery the harness. Uh, this is uh, yeah. uh, and nice. M10 metric 10. metric 10. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very strong. Okay, and um, at the bottom end where the motor goes in, could you please show me this again and explain mm -hmm. in more detail how the motor case. Uh, lies okay. up and how the thrust from the motor is transferred to the airframe. We have some engines before it's they are they are old, but we that we can use them for the simulation. Yeah, yeah. Just, simulation. We will explain to me. Yeah, show me how it will work. First of all, we firstly assemble the fins. We have center fins. We also have engine block and uh, through this this section, we assemble the fins. After that, we uh, proceed to engine. Uh, I like that. Okay, so the engine block, it it slides in. Yes. The fins, is that correct? Yes, yes. It is, it's, uh, dimension is uh, appropriate for the engine. Okay, so it's the outer diameter is six inches basically to the airframe, and there's a hole in it for the engine to slide into. Is that? Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like that. You, yeah. And, this, and this section is. Yeah. Yeah, this so, is the. Side. Side. 
another diameter motor or it's like, like different or, yes this engine different or different engine but at the at same time same yes we sent the engine to this uh, so so the block the block uh, is it screwed in or does it rest yes, against the bottom of the fins where where does the thrust get transferred to the airframe the engine block you can set in pass here you have bit for Yes. Okay. We also so have six screws here around them. Normally, we use four screws for the fins, but the engine block is need to be strong because of that reason. We use as uh, six screws, and they okay. are M uh, metric six. M so, metric. so all the thrust is transferred through the engine block. Six. So there's six screws. The yes, the block doesn't rest against the fins. It just is screwed in yes yeah okay and, and how how is the motor held inside against the block do you have a cap or or something that holds the motor from coming out center ring. we have a center ring here after the pins we have a section for the center ring this is the this is the last section of the engine and uh, the engines uh, Keep uh, it's connected. It's uh have interaction with the engine block with a uh, bit word screw, and it's it's I think it's enough for the uh, power tra transfer. Okay, so so the forward closure of the motor case has some all thread coming out, and and you screw a nut on that to hold the motor in. To this part, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we you can it's, it's you like can a, see the yeah. engine will have this section and this section has screw. Uh, this yep. is the transfer point for yep. the power. When we slide into it, we roll yeah. and make you, it. We turn around. Make it it's yes. strong. Okay. In right here, we have one, three. Yeah. In here, in yeah. here, in you here. You can think of my finger as the engine block. Yeah. yeah, like a yeah. real model. It stops to make the thrust go up, and the centering it's avoid the motor moves. Yeah. Okay. In the conclusion, motor is all strongly connected to the body, and the old thrust is going to transfer to transfer to body. No problem. About and it. our friend also conducted uh, a. Finite element simulations for the uh, in essence for the uh, real world application because we use computers for simulations after that and it's easy enough for real world and then we design it in real life produce it. There is no uh, no deformation <laughs> on the engine group. Option question. Media. Uh, one one point five. We use safety coefficient as 1.5, yes. and we also apply yield strength point as critical point. We said, try to stay in the elastic region of material. And already uh, centering, sharing force uh, come motors. Okay, good. Looks nice. I, I understand, guys. Thank you for explaining. Uh, a, a couple other small questions. The main parachute, how big is it? 2.5 meters. Okay. Meter. So how fast do you think the rocket will descend on your main parachute? Uh, I remember it's, uh, it's about 10 meters per second. Descent okay. rate is 10 meters per eight meter per second. Okay. It's about okay. Eight, meters. eight meters per second is better. Yeah. 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 Ten, 10 is pretty fast. <laughs> uh, I believe that's the limit is 10 yeah. meters per second. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, ha have you guys practiced folding your parachute? Do you know yes. how to do this? Yes, is we know that in the uh, last year. I did that. Uh, we did it last year and I practiced that a lot. In yeah. that part, 
but uh, we learned a lot. I bet. Uh, I always tell my wife that when I'm folding parachutes, it's like a big silk dress. Yes. You know, it's like a pleated dress. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to fold it. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. You lost in, and it's yeah. Okay, and could you show me the recovery harness, the actual, um, um, like the nylon or the Kevlar that you're going to use to connect the rocket pieces together? But you are asking about the shock cord. Yeah, you shock cord. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's. This is a this is all old uh, of course. I think this polyester material, but it is not you know we don't we don't have any trust for that show course. We show them for, for show you for the uh, example. Uh, we are we are trying to uh, new uh, we are trying to buy new show course uh, as <laughs> Kevlar. We are we are using uh, have. Uh, 25 uh, kilometer, uh, kilometer. Kilometer meter to the strength. Okay, and, and the material is nylon, correct? Yes. Pylon. Pylon. Pylon, and it's uh, 20 kilonewtons. My friend strength. says pylon. Pylon. Pylon material. I don't know about it. So is, is the material... Um, can can it burn from the black powder or is uh, it yes but we will use protection for that okay protection. so sh show me what kind of protection you're going to use around this we don't have any one but uh, we will purchase it uh we, we will be the most well the fire pro fire pro fabric we will use fire pro fire pro okay so so you're going to smoke a, a, a small sleeve of of fireproof uh, material. Uh, there is fire clock. Fire clock. Fire here. Yeah. Okay. So so you have like metallic tape on there, but but are are you going to use like a fireproof fabric to make like a a little <laughs> for the... Um, we well, we, we will really use uh, the fireproof fabric, and also we are we are planning to use some metallic uh, material. As okay, you can see. great. Yeah, so at the ends to seal it. All right. So so five minutes left. Um, when do you think you'll be ready to do charge testing, like uh, ejection charge testing with the real rocket, with the real shear pins? And actually, we conducted we this conduct. test last week because we uh, also have a report uh, for the Technofest uh, 2024 hour in, in country national, co national, national competition. Which, is, when summer is come, there is a competition at our nation, and we all the years we compete, we enter the competition last week. We had a, a rough report, you know, progress report control. like IRH. But but that was for another rocket a or, or this rocket? I think we can we, we conduct this the test, other uh, rocket for the test next week or the other, next week. Because we have some exams and uh, homeworks. And we are, we, have, we are busy about that. Uh, we are trying to. Uh, uh, yeah, we. Our friend uh, says that uh, he conducted the structural test in ANSYS mechanical. Yes, mechanical. Uh, we shown that our technical reports. Uh, we made uh, structural analysis uh, for rockets. Also, I uh, spoke. I spoke with my teacher in uh, my faculty to conduct three point test. Three point banding test for, for uh, tensile, tensile and compressor test for materials because the compressed materials uh, I think should need a test. We have we don't have any uh, curing oven oven or something like that. We cure them in our room temperature for one days or two days. Uh, we uh, we don't have the exact exact glass transition temperature, 
because of that reason, we uh, tried to learn the glass transition temperature and its mechanical properties. Uh, I think we will conduct this test next week or the other week. Yeah. So my advice to you is to actually perform a real charge test on the rocket you plan to fly yes, with, with the real shear pins, no matter how many other Maybe tests you tried. Just make the other, our other rocket, what we make the, in our real this rocket, this rocket, rocket. rocket. And we will make, we understand you. you we understand yeah. you. This I, is I, I, I understand. But you know, you're running out of time. Yes. And, yes. and, and there's. <laughs> A lot of times you say, oh, I don't need to do this, but I always regret that. So you should test it. And then the second suggestion I have for you, assemble your rocket in your shop and measure the center of gravity with everything packed so you know for sure that it's stable. Don't wait until you get to the United States. Okay. okay. We will change it in our... You know, pack it up and put it on a big table and measure when it, when it's really done and paint it. And, and, and that way you know um, where your center of gravity is and you can correct for your motor weight. Uh, but but that way you know for sure it's stable. Okay? You would like to show you another uh, planet binding uh, specimen. We also have planet binding information in our workshop. We, uh, we design it and produced from 3D parts, but it's very slow for the production. We uh, try to optimize it, but we have a specimen for the filament winding. We, uh, uh, I, I saw the pictures in... of this in your reports, I think. Yes, we, first of all, in our first reports, uh, we uh, try to, we, we, are, we were planning to use filament winding machine for uh, upper body trip and lower body trip production, but our uh, filament winding machine uh, is slower uh, than we, uh, we thought is machine because of that reason we uh, uh, change our production method to wet layup and uh, vacuum bagging okay so i have to stop um the recording now because i have another review okay. just like this that starts in one minute so uh i am happy uh with everything we saw today you guys have a little more work to do. Good luck with that and safe travels and good luck at the competition. And I'll come by. Is there, is there any problem about the rocket? All good. I, everything that I had questions about, I asked. So. Okay, thank you for, forward. that was nice. Uh, it was nice meeting for yeah. you. For yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you have a mixed team. I like to see women and men working together. I think you end up with better solutions. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, work together and I hope you win the competition. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.